Hi everyone, in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to draw a tree branch in pastels. Now the tips and techniques that I'm sharing in this video can be applied when drawing anything that's bark related, so branches, twigs, tree trunks, anything like that. So the first step is to get a good base layer in place. Now I'm using my pan pastels and my round soft tool for this and the big tip at this stage is make sure not to fill the tooth of the paper. So you can still see my white transfer line showing through and that is what I use as a reference as to how much of that pastel I want for this first layer. If I add two or three thick layers with my pan pastels I'm going to end up filling the tooth of the paper and that's obviously something that I really want to avoid. Filling the tooth of the paper is going to massively limit what details and additional layers we can add on top. Now with this pan pastel layer I'm not focusing on mixing the exact colour, that's really not important, but what I am focusing on is my values. So as you can see I'm taking the time to map in those main lights and darks. Now I do this when I work with fur as well. If I map in my main lights and darks first and I've got the placement of those accurate, it's far more easier to follow our reference photo and therefore we feel that we're getting more of that realistic look early on. So now I've got the base layer in place, I'm going to now focus the rest of this video on the main branch that the lioness is stood on. So the next layer on top of my base is I'm really again just mapping in where the main lights and darks are. I'm really not focusing on details, we want to save those for our additional layers. Now I put a lot of emphasis on my base layer stage because this is the foundation for our details. I want to be making sure that I've got this fairly accurate, just like I did with the pan pastels, but this is all about reinforcing those lights and darks. That pan pastel base layer, it looks soft and blended, so what I want to be doing now with the pencils for this second layer is tidying everything up, but still only making it a base layer. I'm not looking at detail and that's so important at this early stage. Now one of the common mistakes that I often see is that details are added too soon. Just like what I've mentioned here, I like to really build up a good base before I even consider adding any kind of texture or detail. So jumping into those lighter highlights first on top of a pan pastel base layer is going to significantly limit the depth, detail, realism of what that piece could potentially achieve. Now if you've seen many of my other videos here on YouTube, you know that I really do break it up into small sections, one part at a time. And you can see here that this section of the branch had been cut off, so the texture of this grain on the bark is very different to the full smoother surface of the rest of the tree. So here I wanted to make sure that I've captured that difference. So by making sure that I am not becoming overwhelmed throughout the layering process, I'm starting to now break it up into those smaller sections. Now because this area is a little bit more textured, slightly more challenging, you'll see now that I'm starting to indicate at some detail before I move on to the rest of the tree branch. Now the reason I did this is this section of the branch, it does look different in texture where it has been cut. So I wanted to make sure that because this area is a little bit more challenging, that I progressed through this so that it looked more like that reference photo and then I could move on to the next section. I feel that by breaking it up like this in a way that's more manageable, we work more efficiently, far more effectively, and we don't get that overwhelming feeling as much. If that does happen, it's usually because we're working on too much of a larger area. So if I need to, I'll break it up one square inch at a time. Now when I'm starting to hint at the details here, notice that they're very subtle. Again, I'm not jumping to those lighter highlights first. All of the midtones, those layers of subtlety, I speak about all the time in my real-time tutorials on Patreon. And if you are interested in drawing along to this full project of the lioness, the background, everything, then that is included on the Patreon real-time version, so I'll link that in the description below if it's of interest. But building up the layers here gradually is something that I will work with no matter what it is that I'm drawing. The layers of subtlety in between, so all of those midtones, are what help to build up the depth. Now if you're drawing fur, that's going to aid with the softness of that fur, but with this, something that is much more of a harder, more rigid texture, it's still important to make sure that we're capturing those midtones because otherwise this tree branch is going to look very flat. We still want it to look like it's got that um, three-dimensional look. So in order to capture that, the values are so important. Now one question that I'm asked is, how do I pick the colors, the, the pencils that we should be using based on our reference photo? Now again, this is something that I cover thoroughly in the Patreon tutorials. I've got a very simple color wheel method that helps for me to identify which pencils we should be using. 
but basically here I'm focusing more on the values. The colour is important but for me it's not as important as the values. But knowing how to pick our pencils and the colours to use can make it far less stressful throughout that drawing process. So again if that is something that you would like to cover and see thoroughly then all of this is in my real time tutorials on Patreon. And this section of the tree branch is a great example of that because here I'm using more of my warmer greys, some slightly browner tints, but there's not a great deal of colour, not compared to the lioness anyway. But this section of the branch is still looking realistic because I'm focusing on the values. And that's why grayscale mediums like charcoal, graphite, black and white paintings, all of those can still look hyper realistic just like a black and white photograph because the values are right, yet there's no drop of colour that's been used. Now as I continue to layer here, again look at how I'm refining those lights and darks, although I'm using an orange pencil here to influence a little bit more of that colour, it's a lighter value on top of my darker base layer, so it's providing an important mid-tone. At this stage here I can really start to now work on those details that's going to aid with that texture. So now I'm coming in with my darker pencils and some more of my brighter highlights to again hype up that contrast. I'm adding my darkest values and those brightest highlights once I've already got a really good established base foundation in. The texture of this branch is looking realistic but I can take it to that next level by reinforcing those values. So again here I'm coming in with a pencil, this is actually a lighter pink and this is just helping me to reinforce those final highlights that are catching the very tips of some of the more rougher texture on that branch. Now something that can more easily be done is, we've got pastel on the paper here, we could call this section finished. But by spending another 5 or 10 minutes just reinforcing more of those lighter layers, really darkening up some of those shadows, again all about reinforcing that contrast, this section of the log, the branch, can be taken to another level. And this is something that I'm always looking to achieve in my drawings. I don't just want to leave a section and go, oh yeah, okay, that will do. I really want to be making sure that I can look at my photograph and think, do you know, are there any tiny little details that I've missed out that might make my drawing better? Now, this isn't to say that I'm looking to draw in every th single detail from that reference photo into my drawing, because I really don't feel that that's important. Like when I draw fur, there's going to be thousands and thousands of hairs I'm not looking to draw each individual hair, I just want to make the impression that I have done that. And that's exactly the same when drawing branches. I don't have to draw in every single tiny bit of bark, but I want to give the impression that I've done that through getting my values right and the number of details in that drawing in that one section that we're working on. Now of course that does really come down to a balance. So I don't want to be making a section too light or too dark, that's going to potentially really adjust the texture completely. So we do need to be aware of how far we want to push that. But if you are looking at a part of your drawing and you're thinking, do you know what, that looks a little bit flat. I'm not quite sure why, it's usually the values. You could go a little bit darker with your shadows and go a little bit brighter with your highlights. Usually that is the one thing that's going to make a big difference. Now in tutorials where I'm drawing fur, I really do speak about the importance of good pencil technique. But when we work on something like this, the pencil technique is not as important, but you'll see here that I'm still following the grain of the wood. So any texture on that bark where it changes direction, I want to be making sure that I'm moving my pencil in that same way. So from that point of view, it would be similar to following the fur direction. If I start to move my pencil in different ways here, I'm going to completely change the structure of that tree or the branch which of course is then not going to make it look like the animal is necessarily stood on that in a way that it should be. So the lights and darks and the way that you're moving your pencil, that is important. But you can get away with using far more of a blunter lead, you really don't have to be working with sharper points for this. Now depending on the sort of tree or branch that you're drawing, the texture of that bark is going to be very different. So actually this one here, it's had a bit more of a smoother look to it, especially on the section that I'm currently drawing. Whereas if you've got a tree that's got more of a rougher bark texture, then you're going to be using the same techniques that I'm showing here, but you're going to have to make more of your edges of your lights and your darks a little bit more harsh. That's going to help to build up more of that textured appearance. And again, you're going to have more of your highlights, more of your shadows in different ways, different directions to help build up that bumpy appearance. But as I'm coming back in here now with my midtones, this is where I'm just reinforcing more of the grain of that tree. Now again, this is something that I want to be making sure that I get right and I don't want to be tempted to jump into those highlights. 
Now, as I'm continuing to layer here, one of the questions that I'm asked fairly frequently is about filling the tooth of the paper. You can see just how many layers I've been able to add on top of my pan pastel layer that we started with. And that's because I was very careful with each stage not to apply too much pastel. Now the Patreon version of this Lioness tutorial really does focus on lots of different elements, but the one area that I do cover thoroughly is how much pan pastel to apply and how to apply it. Because one of the most common questions that I'm asked regarding pan pastels is how do we know how much of that pan pastel to put onto the sponge or the applicator before we use it on the paper? Now this is a great question because it can vary massively depending on how you are moving that applicator across the pan pastel. So this is something that I actually show in the palette camera on the Patreon version. So each one of my real time tutorials, you have a palette camera in the corner and I'm showing you exactly how to pick up that pan pastel, how to mix those colors and so on. But something you want to be very aware of is don't apply that pan pastel directly to your paper. This is a really big tip. It's worthwhile having a bit of normal printer paper off to the side so you can use that to mix your colors first and then apply it to your drawing paper. You're not gonna have as much of that pan pastel then apply in one solid area. You can then blend that over more evenly on your drawing paper. So that's something that I always do regardless, but it is something that I cover thoroughly in the real-time version on Patreon. Now going back to refining the contrast, look at how I've just darkened up the shadow here underneath the toes. That's really important because this is gonna to help to make it look like the lioness is really perched on top of that and the toes are just overhanging slightly on that one foot. If I don't have a shadow there, it's gonna make the lioness look like it's just been plonked on that paper. And of course we don't want that. We want this all to be part of that entire image. Now something that's important to notice at this stage is I'm working with more of my final details. So adding in some of those tinier little cracks in the wood, and then I'm gonna come back in here with my lighter pencils to reinforce the highlights. But if I felt that my details were not having that um, real change to the piece, so I felt like they were a little bit muted, a bit dull, that's an indication that the base layers underneath aren't dark enough. So here you can see that I'm actually coming back in and reinforcing more of the subtle more out of focus layers underneath because I felt like I needed to have a little bit more depth here so that then when I come back in with my highlight I had a better foundation to work from. Now I put a lot of hours so far up to the point of this drawing and it's only now the last corner that I've got left to work on. It would be very easy here to start skipping layers and cutting corners and you know just starting to rush. So when you feel like that and I say it's more easily done when you've got the very last section left to do but really take a breather, take a day off if you need to and work on something else or even just for half an hour. If you do need to get that project done that day, just have a little break and then come back to it. Because if I was to rush this lower corner, it would bring down the entire piece. So it is something that I'm very, very aware of throughout that drawing process. So I really do hope this video was useful. If it was, I would really appreciate it if you could give it a like and a thumbs up because it makes a huge difference to my channel. If you would like to draw along to this or any of my other step-by-step -step tutorials, then I'll link my Patreon in the description below. But if you've got any art-related questions, feel free to pop them in the comments because I'm more than happy to help if I can. And I also upload two videos to YouTube every week, so if you would like to get notified of that content, then don't forget to hit the subscribe and the bell button. And here's a photo of my finished drawing, and I am going to be uploading another video at the end of the week. But as always, thank you so much for watching.